which leads me to some pictures for us to help ourselves remember this. All right, so this is skewed left. This is skewed right. Oh, this one down here is skewed right because it has a tail going to the right. And then the one in the middle is symmetric. Right? So I could fold it up along that middle line and it would be on top, you know, the two sides would be on top of each other. It's how you go about making Valentine's cards when you're a kid. Right? All right, so what's the relationship? Okay, well, look at the bottom one because that's the easiest one for us to see. We had a big tail going to the right. We had a big outlier. And what happened was the mean was larger than the median. Right? The mean got pulled. Oops. There it is. I found the right page. Mean got pulled towards that. So you got pulled towards that side. So the mean is bigger than the median. The mean is bigger than the median. Well, by the same token, if it's skewed left, then the mean will get pulled towards the low side. So the mean will be less than the median. And you can actually see it on the graph. This is the mean right here. That's the mean. And then the median, I'll do in green, is right here. The mode is actually the highest point, in case you want to know. The mode is where the highest point happens, right? Okay, so the mean is less than the median, mean greater than the median. So what about when they're symmetric? Well, then they're basically the same, right? They're at the same spot, so they're equal to each other. So the mean, they're not entirely exactly equal. They're just mostly equal, <laughs> Now, if they're mostly equal, then your better measure of center is the mean, right? The one that you know and love from classes many times over. You add them up and divide by how many there are, ta-da. But if it's skewed, what we just said in important point number two is that the median is a fairer representation of the center of a data set. Now, let's keep that table in mind for actually applying it to a problem right here. So we want to match the median mean combinations to the appropriate graphs and explain what is the better measure of center of graph or center for each graph. Oh, sneaky. Okay. So one thing I notice is that this top graph is skewed right. So when it's skewed right, I want to look for a combination where the mean is bigger than the median. Hmm. Okay. So let's look through the list here. Which ones are some candidates for skewed right? Uh, mean not bigger, uh, mean bigger than the median. So that one's skewed right. Mean, nope, less than, about equal. This one, greater than, right? So, but not by much. That's, that's, that's pretty symmetric. I'd say that one's symmetric. This one is skewed right, right? Because you want the mean to be significantly bigger than the median, not just like a tiny bit bigger. So that one seems pretty symmetric. Um, this one seems pretty symmetric. They're really close to each other. I'll put two M's on that one to make it obvious. And then this one, mean is less than the median. The mean is less than the median. Okay, so first thing I did was figure out from that table, mean less than median, right? But only by a tiny bit. Eh, symmetric. Mean less than, or mean greater than the median, skewed right. Mean significantly less than the median, skewed left skewed left and so on. All right, now remember the mean is the balance point. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make a little note right up here. Remember, mean is the balance point, like on a fulcrum of a lever or a teeter-totter. Okay, so let's look at our two skewed right combos. The mean is 6.5 or the mean is 5.1. So think of it, here's six. 6. 6.5 would be right there. Does that fairly balance out that data set? Or I'd be better off at, where is it, 5.1, which is right here. Actually, I think the 6.5 is a little far over. 
It doesn't seem, it seems like we just have all those little low ones and it doesn't seem like we're cutting into that clump at all. So it seems like it's going to tilt over and be lumpy. I mean, it's a judgment call, but I would argue that this one is the one that's for graph number one. So if I say this is graph number one, or I could say up here, this is F. It's, it's a judgment call. If you're thinking like, oh, you know, how am I going to know? It, it, you're trying to, to gauge, hey, you know, if I stacked all these up on weights, would this bit over here balance with all of that clump? And I don't think it would. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. I think it's closer to over here. That way you're cutting into that clump a little bit, kind of getting a little bit more on that right side to balance. All right, now what about our symmetric ones? I guess we can we can go with symmetric. Actually, well, let's do skewed left because that's histogram number two. All right, histogram number two, we've got a 4.1 and a 4.8. 4.1 is right there. There's no way that balances. Look at that tiny little tail and that big old clump there. That's not right. 4.8, that's better, right? 4.8 is almost to the five. If I put the balance point right here, it's going to balance out right, right here. That's going to balance out better. Just like if I go here, that's going to balance out better, right? So that one is, let's see, 5 point, or no, skewed left, skewed left. 4.1, no good. 4.8, yes, that's the one. So that's graph number two. So it'd be letter D. All right, now what about the two symmetric ones? So where's the balance point? Is it at 6.4, which is what letter E is? Hmm. Or is it at 5.2? Oh, it's at 5.2, right? 6.4 is a little too far over. It's too much tilted. So this one is graph number three. It's a judgment call, but you're trying to, to balance, literally, the balance point, which is the mean, with the whole symmetric skewed left skewed right thing. You're making judgment calls, you know, are those close enough to be symmetric? Seems like it. And, you know, are these far enough away to be skewed? Seems like it. This is not algebra class, so it's not going to have, you know, one right answer that's always perfect. Sometimes you just have to defend yourself and make sense out of it. So for your own point for explanations, remember the mean is the balance point. We already have our skewed left skewed right explanation here. And then we're using the balance point action to figure out which one of these is the correct one. All right, now one last comment to make about median, which is that this is an actual graph of the median family retirement savings. So how much people are saving in retirement for white, which is right there, that blue line, black, which is that green one, and then Hispanic, which is that orange one. Um, in the US, I have, um, this is real data. I believe it came from the census, but I'd have to go look at it. So this is actual median retirement family savings. Now the question becomes, why is it that this, which is an actual graph from the internet, <laughs> from, um, I believe, the, well, I'm going to check it out. Let me click on that source. There you go. It was a survey of consumer finances <laughs> that originally came um, gave us this data, so or these data. So why is it saying median? Hmm. Well, that's because when you think about average family retirement or family retirements in general, family retirement savings is skewed right. Look, at, think of the picture. It looks like this. You know, most people are here, but some people are way over here, right? So it's a skewed right distribution. It has to be. I mean, it's the same thing true for um, income in America or household um, worth, right? Household wealth, how much your house is worth. They're all skewed right. And so if it's skewed right, then it's better to use the median, because it's a fairer representation of average. It resists the outliers, right? The people that are way over here that have, you know, just way too much money <laughs> and have lots and lots and lots for their retirement. That's unusual and it would pull the mean towards them. So the median's a fair representation of average or center. 
As a matter of fact, the median is usually the preferred average for a lot of economic and financial indicators, such as income, net worth, household income, home value, et cetera. Um, just all of those types of economic things because they're almost always skewed right. And since they're almost always skewed right, the median is a fair representation of average.